All right, listener, are you ready? Because today we are going to really dive deep into A Course in Miracles. <gasps> oh, yeah. Just the name itself Yeah. sounds kind of intense, right? <laughs> I get this picture in my head of like mystical retreats and like endless meditation. Right. What about you? What's your kind of first impression with this title? It definitely has like an aura of mystique about it, doesn't yeah. it? But the thing is, while it does use some Christian terminology, okay. it's not really about religion in the way we typically think of it. Okay. Like, you know, going to church or anything. Right. It's more like, imagine it as like a spiritual self-help guide. Okay. A roadmap to kind of shifting your perception and finding inner peace. So less about dogma and more about like inner transformation. Exactly. Yeah, I'm into it. Hmm. But speaking of intense, this course opens with a line that really grabbed my attention, and it goes like this. Okay. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Wow. Talk about a bold statement. Yeah. What is this whole real versus unreal business all about? So right from the get-go, the course challenges how we typically see the world. Okay. When it talks about real, it's referring to a truth that's unchanging and eternal. Oh, like, yeah, for right. example, the unwavering love of God mm. or that deep sense of connection we all crave. Right. But then on the flip side, you have the unreal, and that is the world as we perceive it. Okay. Our subjective experiences that are often clouded by, mm -hmm. you know, fear and driven by ego. So it's like there's this whole other level of reality that we're missing out on because we're so caught up in, like, the day-to-day -day exactly. drama. And the Course suggests that most of us are living in a state of what it calls miscreation. Miscreation. Where we mistake our thoughts and perceptions for reality. Mm -mm. So, like, think about it. Yeah. How often do you find yourself focusing on what's wrong, sure. what's missing, or what could go wrong? Yeah, all the time. Right. And that right there. Yeah. That's our perception shaving our reality. Okay. I see where you're going with this. Yeah. So if our perception is creating a reality based on fear, mm -hmm. how do we shift that? Right. So the Course proposes that piece. Okay. Yeah. Isn't something that we find out there. Okay. But rather, it's a state of being that arises when we align with a truer reality. Okay. So it's about questioning our assumptions and choosing to see the world and ourselves okay. through a new lens. Which leads us to miracles. Okay, I have to admit, this is where I get really curious. Okay. Because I usually think of miracles as these, like, big supernatural events. Right. You know, defying the laws of nature. Parting the Red Sea. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm looking at these excerpts from like the first few chapters. Yeah. They're painting a very different picture. Yes, they are. Because the, this course defines miracles not as magic. Okay. But as shifts in perception that bring us closer to truth, to love. Okay. They're those aha moments when the illusion kind of fades mm -hmm. and you glimpse that connection. Okay. The love that was always there just hidden beneath the surface. So instead of parting the Red Sea, right. it's more about those moments when you suddenly understand a situation from a completely different perspective. Yes. Like a weight has been lifted. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine holding on to a grudge for years. Okay. And then one day something shifts and you can finally let it go. Yeah. That release, mm -hmm. that shift in perception. Right. That's a miracle in the Course's terms. Mm. Okay. It's about seeing the miraculous in the ordinary. Okay. And allowing that recognition to transform your experience. I really like that. Yeah. And, you know, one quote that really stood out to me was, yeah. Miracles are expressions of love that help us recognize our shared reality with God and others. Okay, now that I can get behind. Yeah. But I have to be honest, some of this talk about forgiveness, right. which seems to come up a lot in the Course, it does. It can sound a bit preachy, you know, yeah. like we've all heard it before, right? Yeah. Forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't always feel that simple. So what's the Course's take on this whole forgiveness thing? Yeah, you're not alone in feeling that way. Okay. And you're right. Forgiveness is central to the Course's message. Mm -hmm. But it's not about condoning bad behavior or letting anyone off the hook. Oh, it's actually a radical act of self-liberation. Okay, now that's interesting. Right. Tell me more about that. So the Course suggests that... Holding on to anger, resentment, and judgment. Okay. You know, those heavy emotions that we often carry around. Yeah. It actually keeps us trapped in a cycle of pain. Mm. So forgiveness in this context is about choosing to see the situation. Okay. And even the person you feel has wronged you. Yeah. Through a lens of compassion. Okay. It's about recognizing that holding on to anger hurts you more than anyone else. That makes a lot more sense than just saying forgive and forget. 
right? right. How do we actually do that? Right. I mean, it's one thing to say it, yeah. but putting it into practice seems way harder. It is. And the c course acknowledges that. Okay. But it starts with a simple but profound shift. Okay. And that is recognizing that our perceptions create our reality. Oh, wow. It's about becoming aware of the stories we tell ourselves and choosing to challenge them. Okay. And a key part of this is understanding this mysterious voice mm -hmm. that's mentioned in the preface, right. the Holy Spirit. Right. There's this mention of a voice. Yes. Almost like a character in itself. Yeah. It seems like a pretty important concept. Yeah. What's that all about? So we left off on this idea of the Holy Spirit. Right. You know that voice we were talking about? This, right. It's not like some booming voice from the heavens. Right. right. Okay. It's more like this inner guide that the Course talks about. Okay. You can think of it like that wise, compassionate presence within you. Okay. That sees beyond all the egos, like mm. fears and limitations. That makes sense. But how do we actually tune into that? Yeah. Like, especially with all the noise and distractions of everyday life. That that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And the cool thing is the course actually offers some practical answers. Okay. And it's not about, you know, grand gestures or anything. Okay. It's more about integrating like small, consistent practices into your life. Okay. It emphasizes the power of what it calls choosing again. Choosing again. So remember how we were talking about our perceptions shaping our reality? Right. This is where it gets really practical. It's about recognizing when you're caught in that negative thought spiral. Yeah. And then consciously choosing to see things differently. Can you give me a real life example? Because yeah. it's kind of hard to grasp, I think, yeah. like in the abstract. Absolutely. So like, let's say I'm at work. Yeah. I'm dealing with a difficult coworker. Yeah. They're constantly criticizing me. Mm. It's creating a lot of stress. Right. How do I just like choose again yeah, yeah. when their behavior feels so real and impactful like in that moment? I love that you brought up a workplace scenario. Yeah. Because it really highlights how easily we can get caught up in the drama. Yeah. So in that situation, the course might invite you to ask. Okay. What if my perception of my coworker's behavior is being filtered through my own insecurities or past experiences? Oh, interesting. So it's not about denying their behavior. Okay. It's about questioning the story that you're attaching to it. So it's about taking a step back and trying to see the situation. Yes. And even my coworker mm. with a little more neutrality and compassion. Yes. Even if it feels really difficult at first. Exactly. Because oftentimes our ego... Right. You know, that inner voice that thrives on fear and separation right. is adding its own commentary to the situation. Okay. It might be telling you, see, you're not good enough. Oh, yeah. Or they're trying to make you look bad. Wow. That really resonates. Yeah. It's like this constant inner battle. It is. Right. It is. But we do have a choice in like which voice we listen to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the more we practice aligning with the Holy Spirit's wisdom, mm -hmm. the quieter the ego's voice becomes. This is making me think about another concept that comes up a lot. Yeah. The ego. Yes. Of course, seems to frame it as this kind of trickster figure. Right. Always trying to keep us separate, yeah. afraid, and uh -huh. stuck in those negative cycles. Spot on. The ego loves to keep us trapped in fear. Right. Because that's where it feels most powerful. Okay. It's constantly comparing, judging, looking for reasons to feel threatened. So how do we quiet the ego's chatter then? Right. And make space for the Holy Spirit's guidance? Ooh, yeah. It sounds like a constant battle. It can feel that way for sure. Yeah. But remember that concept of choosing again. Right. That's a powerful tool. Okay. And this is also where forgiveness comes in. Okay. Not as a way of condoning bad behavior. But as a way of freeing ourselves from the ego's grip. Okay, that makes sense. Because holding on to resentment and anger, yes, even if it feels justified, yeah. it just keeps us stuck in that cycle, right? Exactly. And it gives the ego more power. Okay. Forgiveness in this context is about recognizing when you're holding on to those negative emotions yeah. and making a conscious choice to release them. So it's about choosing to see ourselves and others through yeah. a more compassionate lens. Yes. Even if it feels really difficult or undeserved yeah. in the moment. Precisely because ultimately forgiveness mm -hmm. is about recognizing our shared humanity. Okay. It's about recognizing that we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We all hurt others. Right. And we all have that capacity for growth and transformation. This reminds me of how casually we throw around the word miracle. Right. Like, oh, it's a miracle I didn't miss my flight. Right. It's a miracle I found my keys. Yeah. But the course seems to be pointing to something much more profound. Yeah. 
like a fundamental shift in our perception and experience of reality. It is profound. Yeah. And yet these shifts are happening all the time. Mm. Think about those moments when you experience like a sense of awe and wonder. Okay. Like watching a sunset. Yeah. Or connecting with a loved one mm. or even just feeling a sense of gratitude for the simple things. Okay. Those are glimpses of the miraculous. It's funny, you know, because sometimes it's those everyday miracles that really get to me, like more so than the big stuff you were talking about, like a beautiful sunset or have you ever had those moments where you just feel super connected to someone? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, wow. It's like this moment of, wow, yeah. where did that come from? Exactly. And they just they always remind me that there's like something bigger at play, mm -hmm. you know, something beyond just like the everyday worries and dramas. Absolutely. No. Those are the moments when we're really catching a glimpse of that truer reality mm. that the Course talks about. Yeah. You know, a reality that's grounded in love and connection and that sense of like awe and wonder. Right. And it's like our perception shifts in those moments. Yes. And we suddenly see the world and ourselves through this totally new lens. It's like the clouds part. Right. Exactly. And you get a little bit of sunshine. This whole conversation is making me think about the idea of truth. Okay. Because the Course seems to make this distinction between like the ego's version of truth mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit's truth. What's that all about? That is a really important distinction. Okay. So the ego's truth is all about separation. Okay. You know, it's that us versus them mentality. Right. right? Good versus bad, right versus wrong. Yeah. It's very black and white. Okay. And it's this limited perspective that keeps us constantly, you know, comparing and judging right. and feeling insecure. Yeah, like we're never enough exact. in the ego's eyes. Yeah. Right. But then the Holy Spirit, on the other hand, offers a truth that is rooted in unity and love and like the interconnectedness of everything. Okay. And it's a truth that can be really hard to grasp intellectually. Right. But when you experience it, even just like glimpses of it. Yeah. It's deeply transformative. So how do we start to like tune out the ego's kind of noisy, often negative version of truth and open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit's, you know, more expansive perspective? Well, it's a practice. Yeah. You know, it's a journey of remembering who we truly are. Mm -hmm. And every time you choose forgiveness over resentment okay, or love over fear or even just like pausing to appreciate the beauty around you. Right. Those are all ways that you're aligning with that deeper truth. Yeah. You know, it's not about being perfect. It's right. about just shifting your awareness little by little. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. And I think one of the biggest takeaways for me is that, like, we actually have a lot more power to shape our reality than we often realize. That's the heart of it. Yeah. We're not victims of our circumstances. Right. You know, we have a choice in how we perceive the world yeah. and how we respond to the challenges that inevitably come up. Mm. It's empowering when you really think about it. It is. So listener, we're going to leave you with this. Okay. What if you could approach just one challenge in your life mm -hmm. through this lens of forgiveness yeah. and miracles? Powerful. What would shift for you? Mm -hmm. What new possibilities might open up? It's so good. Until next time, keep diving deep, keep questioning, and keep choosing love.